Hey guys and welcome back to War Thunder. So over the weekend there's this absolutely amazing tournament that went on that I'm not even sure a lot of you might be even aware of or maybe even remotely interested in, but I'm most definitely interested in it. And that was the one vs one duels. Now, ever since the inception of tournaments in War Thunder, I've been really looking forward to a one vs one setup that tried to figure out who were the best pilots or players in War Thunder arcade planes. And this was the first ever opportunity to do it. And my oh my, it was not easy at all. It really wasn't. Put it this way, in order to get into this 1 vs 1 tournament, you had to go through a qualifiers which was a 4 vs 4 tournament and the top 300 from that were allowed to go into this 1 vs 1. And so I got into the top 300 and I climbed up my way in the 1 vs 1 ladder and so I'm now taking on literally the best players, pilots in War Thunder arcade planes. And so I'm showing you guys this match, and it's just one of the many that I had, but it was a rather lengthy one, not the longest, but still rather lengthy, and it's a good example of just how tense these matches can get, and also how I managed to turn a rather unfortunate situation into something more positive. Now, I have to probably mention this, I have a feeling a lot of people, if they haven't partaken into any one of these tournaments, or if they haven't able, been able to climb into the higher tiers of one of these tournaments, or if you're new to War Thunder, or if you don't really play arcade, then you probably won't be able to appreciate exactly all the little details that are going on here. Because the thing is, it's not just as simple as putting down your combat flaps, your landing flaps, and just ruddering hard to the left or the right, and then you'll eventually outturn your opponent. It's not like that at all. It's not that simple. There are a lot of minute details here that I'll try to help you guys with by explaining what's going on. So, right at the very beginning, uh, you'll notice that we're both using the same plane, and that's because each day of the tournament, there's a different plane to use, and it's a mirror match as well. So, you have to sort of think to yourself, the only way that somebody could outturn another is by their technique being better than the other pilot, and that comes down to a multitude of different things. For example, you have four different uh, flaps that you can use for, for, for the Yak-1B. You can use the race flaps, you can use the combat, takeoff, or landing. And so using those flaps, the correct one, at the right moment in a turn or a straight or whatever. But also, it's using your throttle control as well. When do you want to lower it down? When do you want to bring it up? And also WEP management, wartime emergency power. Because the thing is, simply just putting it on the entire time is actually detrimental to the longevity of the game. You have to be able to use it at the right time also conserving it at the right time and just letting it build up it's a lot to take in but that's only for yourself and then you also have to keep in mind of what your opponent's doing because he's going to be doing exactly the same thing as well now we both climbed at the very beginning and the reason why is because well i like to mirror what my opponent is doing oddly enough if there's a situation where an enemy is going straight and say if i'm climbing up i'm gonna lose all right and it's a bit strange, because how does somebody lose when they have a higher altitude advantage? The reason is, is because we're using mirrored planes, and somebody with a lower altitude is going to have less speed, and so on the first initial turns, they are going to be able to outturn you. Alright? They're going to be able to outturn you because they have less speed, and so they get the first shots, and then they can kill you. Sounds strange, but it's true. That's what happens in these tournaments. Now, I've already taken some shots from Larry, and this has added damage to my left wing. So... Luckily for me, I'm trying to play to my, I guess, my advantage by playing on the right, as in turning to the right, rather than turning on the left, where I would definitely be at a detriment, at a disadvantage, because my wing is just damaged. Now, oddly enough, even though I'm turning to the right, I'm still at a disadvantage against Larry, because having my left wing damaged means that I can't stabilize on a turn as well your opposite wing stabilizes that turn. And what happens is that when your opposite wing is damaged, then your f turns are gonna be more flat. Now, Larry is doing this maneuver where he's climbing upwards, and it's kind of an awkward one to be in, especially for myself, because I think this is one of my weakest points, is the climbing corkscrew. I can do it, but I certainly feel like other players can do it better than I can. And the idea of it is that you want to be just doing a sort of shallow uh, climb 
whilst turning at the same time. But it's not only that, you want to conserve your wartime emergency power to use at the right moment. Now we've engaged into a scissors and it looks like Larry's actually winning here. I'm cutting down my throttle because I'm trying to hope that he's going to overshoot me. And it looks like he couldn't get a good shot off on me. And perhaps that's due to because, well, maybe just the angles themselves, but also he might have used up his wartime emergency power. And he had to break off because if he continued that way, then maybe I would have gotten behind him. Perhaps he, that's what he was worried about. But he still has the advantage here. Remember, my wing is damaged. And although it's pink, trust me, pink is a, is a big thing in these one versus one duels. Slight damage can mean a lot in the long term of a duel. And the, another unfortunate thing is that the Yak-1B has blackouts so frequently. There's been times where I've lost my opponent and I've actually died as a result of that. Only on a few occasions though. Most of the time I'm using C to look around and just keep my eyes constantly on what my opponent is doing. Whenever I notice that he's starting to turn sharply and get on my backside, then chances are what he's doing is using his landing flaps and then using his wartime emergency power to make some sharper turns. And it looks like we're gonna gauge into another scissors almost. In fact, it's gotten a lot more awkward because that was a very premature scissors and now he's almost behind me so what am I going to do? If I break off to the left, I'm going to be using my weak wing. So I decided to keep on going with my right one. But unfortunately, he still managed to get off a good shot into my left wing. And it's even more damaged here. And even my fuselage has taken a slight amount of damage. Well, now it's actually taking quite a bit. So everything is a deepish red. I'm being put at a, a serious, grim position right now. Because even if he doesn't kill me right now, even if he overshoots then it still doesn't really matter too much because in terms of the longevity of the duel he's still gonna have an advantage over me because I'm just damaged and he's not at all oh dear it is looking so bad and desperate now notice there are some opportunities where he could have overshot me but the thing is these people aren't dumb these people are at the top of the leaderboard they give you almost no room for ever error they give you almost no opportunity to sh shoot at them and whenever it seems like, okay, if I cut back on the throttle, he'll overshoot me. Well, the thing is, they realize that, and all they're going to simply do is just climb on up out of the way of your aim. And that's exactly what Larry did here. And so I'm just trying to engage him in turns. I'm panicking. I'm panicking at this point so much that my throttle control is bad. My wartime emergency power actually went to a stage where my engine began to putter and that's something you definitely don't want to do because you always want to have the availability of your wartime emergency power. I tried to make a sharp turn there with my landing flaps and the wartime emergency power but still Larry was just up on it as well. He got some shots, shots off into my wing, my left one, and now it's starting to blink a black color. Not a good sign at all. I don't know what happened to him there though. It seemed like he kind of went too far out with that turn and so that lined up a good shot for me and I actually managed to damage him for once. So at long last, it's not just me that's damaged in this match and I think as a result of that, it was a critical turning point of what was going to happen here. And so Larry, rather than going on with these continuous turns where it seems to have actually gone to my favor now since I was able to damage him, He's decided to do a little bit of that uh, climbing corkscrew and not wanting to prolong it too much. He's going to break on down into a descending corkscrew. And I have a feeling he's probably turned on his landing flaps at that point to try and make some sharp turns. And so he's going to go into sort of scissors fashion. I'm going to follow. He's climbing up. We're both going to be stalling. Close to stalling. I'm using my wartime emergency power like mad here. We're falling down. And... There you have it. There you have it. One little tiny window of opportunity. Literally one split second. Not even a second. Where I had a moment to shoot at Larry.
and that was all I needed to kill him. So that just goes to show you like what these duels are like. You can literally be spinning and tangling with your opponent in the air for minutes on end. I think this was how, how long? I, I don't even know, like six, seven, eight minutes, something like that. You can even go that long or even longer than that tangling with your opponent until just one little split second opportunity where you or your opponent can be shot and that's it. That's the duel over. And so many battles are like this, like this as well. It's not just a simple one-off. And it just goes to show just how much these players at the top uh, and even in arcade, how experienced they are and just how they separate themselves from just the average player. I mean, these people are definitely at the top of their game. They know what they're doing in terms of uh, flaps and uh, throttle control and management and wartime emergency power. It's all these little details and being aware of what your opponent does as well. It's absolutely insane. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you're wondering, my highest position was number three on the leaderboard. But the thing is, I don't want to win top three because those have actual prizes like bundles that I already have. I just want to get top 10 because you can get a unique title and you also get some golden eagles out of it. So I'm okay with top 10, but my highest position was top three. Now, as a result of these duels, I've probably learned two or three new things and War Thunder arcade planes that I never knew before and they have definitely helped optimize my play in arcade. So what I'm going to be doing in the upcoming days that I think you guys should probably look forward to is I'm going to be making a tutorial video on just everything I know in arcade planes including these new tips because I really don't think players realize these these things and they make a huge difference if you want to play like the top players in arcade planes then I would highly recommend checking out this video that's going to be coming out. But anyway, guys, until the next one, this is Krebs, and I will catch you guys next time. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Now we blasting off into the ozone. The way we kick it in the dojo is local for sure.